Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the synthesis of estradiol in females, and we're going to compare the functions of the theca cells and the granulosa cells. Now, there was a video I had in the endocrine system, and I'm actually putting this video also in the endocrine system playlist, where I mentioned that it was actually the uh, theca cells that are generating estradiol. Okay? That's more of a gross simplification of what's actually happening. It turns out the theca cells do most of the work for generating estradiol, but they don't actually do the final couple of steps. Okay? They actually leave out the last two steps and allow the granulosa cells to complete them. So it's actually the granulosa cells that are going to make and release the estradiol, but the granulosa cells will be unable to do so without the functioning of the theca cells. That's a brief introduction of what we're going to talk about. Let's go into a little bit of the details here. And at the beginning of this, we're going to have luteinizing hormone, LH. This is one of our gonadotropins that was released by the anterior pituitary gland, also called the adenine hypothesis. So again, from the mechanism that we talked about earlier, with gonadotropin releasing hormone and all that, with the hypothalamus and adenine hypothesis, we're going to get the release of luteinizing hormone into the blood. And I did mention that luteinizing hormone is going to have an effect on theca cells. One of the functions of luteinizing hormone in theca cells is to cause the synthesis of hormones. Now, it's going to trigger this multi-step process, this is many steps right here, where cholesterol, which is the parent steroid, cholesterol is going to be converted into this molecule called androstenedione. I have its chemical structure shown down here. What's important to understand about androstenedione is that is not an estrogen. That's actually an androgen. If you actually look at the first five letters, andro, that implies this is a male hormone. So why would the theca cells be synthesizing a male hormone? Well, one, androstenedione is actually not a powerful androgen. It's a very weak androgen. Um, in fact, testosterone, which is the stronger of the two, testosterone is actually what will cause the increase in size in the Adam's apple in males, increase in size of skeletal muscles. Uh, it will cause facial hair and things like that. Okay? Women obviously do not have facial hair. They do not have a large Adam's apple. Okay? Um, and that's because women have much lower amounts of testosterone. However, what's important about androstenedione is it does cause production of some body hair in women. We know that women naturally have uh, pubic hair and they have armpit hair, axillary hair, and that hair growth is promoted by androstenedione. Okay? That's one thing. But also, androstenedione is not the end product here, although some of it is released into the blood. Most of it is sent over to the granulosa cells, and they're going to finish the job that the theca cells started. Okay? So the granulosa cells have two additional enzymes. The first enzyme is called 17-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This is going to convert androstenedione into testosterone. And you say, wait a minute. Why would women be making testosterone? I thought women made estrogens, right? And testosterone is usually associated with males, right? Well, females do have a little bit of testosterone, nowhere near as much as males do. But it turns out that, interestingly enough, testosterone is the direct precursor to estradiol, the major estrogen, okay? So here's the chemical structure of testosterone. And that's actually what we get by the action of 17-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase on androstenedione. We get this testosterone. And in males, in the Leydig cells, that would pretty much be the end product right there. However, females have this other enzyme, a lot of it, called aromatase. Aromatase is an important enzyme in females because it allows testosterone to be converted to estradiol. Okay, so testosterone, yes, a little bit of it would be released into the blood, not much, but the vast majority of this is going to be converted to estradiol via aromatase. And this estradiol is going to have effects all over the body, and it will also have effects within the granulosa cells and surrounding them, so some uh, paracrine signaling. Uh, for example, um, the maturation of the follicle, folliculogenesis and oogenesis, is partly dependent on estradiol. So some of that estradiol will hang out around the granul granulosa cells where that process is taking place, 
but also this will go elsewhere in the body and exert functions elsewhere, like in the breast tissue for breast development. So whenever testosterone is converted to estradiol, the estradiol can do really one of two things. It can either go far out away from the body and exert effects elsewhere, or it can kind of hang out around the granulosa cells where there are other processes like folliculogenesis and oogenesis that are occurring. That's of course part of, part of the female reproductive cycle, and that, those are partially dependent on estradiol. But in terms of going elsewhere, estradiol can go to other tissues like the breast tissue and promote mammary gland development, and so on and so forth. Now one other clinical correlation I wanted to go over has to do with breast cancer. Now one of the common causes of breast cancer is mutation in proteins called BRCA proteins, like BRCA1 and BRCA2. These can actually lead to the development of breast cancer. And it turns out that for individuals with those mutations that predispose them to breast cancer, um, having a lot of estradiol, even what appear to be normal levels of it, can actually cause breast cancer. And it just makes it more likely in individuals with BRCA1 and 2 mutations. Okay, So if you wanted to help people who are going through that, one of the things you'd want to actually do is inhibit the production of estradiol. Okay? Because in individuals with BRCA1 and 2 mutations, estradiol exacerbates the production of those cancers in the breast tissue. So if you want to actually lower the amount of estradiol, a good bet would be to inhibit the enzyme that produces it. So inhibiting aromatase. And so it turns out that a common uh, treatment for breast cancer, or at least reducing the incidence of it, so a pre-preventative medicine, would actually be using substances called aromatase inhibitors. And by inhibiting aromatase, you don't get this conversion of testosterone into estradiol. And that can actually help people going through that breast cancer. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of theca cells and granulosa cells. The theca cells are really just making the androstenedione, and they sort of send that over to the nearby granulosa cells, and they finish the job with the last two steps, with the last one being the most important for the production of estradiol. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.